Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at the latest addition to the Citizen Nighthawk family. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com, as a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. So in this video, deep dive into this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end. And also throughout this video, if you have any further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page down below where you can learn more, purchase the watch, and book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video. Take a closer look at this watch. Citizen as a brand is beloved and influential when it comes to that gateway for collectors and hobbyists all over the world. Where they really connect with the watch community as far as their styles go is with their tool or professional models from their ProMaster collection. Now today we're going to be looking at a watch that's going to be adopted to the skies and aviation minded individuals with the Nighthawk. This watch has been a part of Citizen's collection for many years now, but recently in the last 12 months, it has now seen a refresh, and we're gonna be looking at one of the latest model additions from this family with the new Citizen Nighthawk. Taking a look at the ProMaster Nighthawk on the wrist, we have a sporty case that measures at 42 millimeters across, 12.7 millimeters thick, and has a lug-to-lug -lug dimension of a restrained 46.6 millimeters for that case dimension size. Visually, the Nighthawk seems to be a bit larger than 42 millimeters with its expansive dial and thin bezel construction, but the compact lug-to-lug -lug distance does enhance the wearability for many wrist sizes out there. Smaller than average wrists shouldn't experience too much difficulty with pulling this piece off either, particularly if you enjoy wearing larger watches or like watches from the aviation side of things. The EcoDrive movement does allow Citizen to use a relatively thin case for the Nighthawk, which is great. At just under 13 millimeters, it's not thin in the classic sense, but it also doesn't sit terribly high on the wrist either. If there is an aspect of wearability where this piece should be addressed, however, it's the flat case back design. With its larger than average size, it does float across the wrist and doesn't recess into the actual sitting position as much as some other variations out there. While wearing it under a dress sleeve is doable, although maybe not as practical when it comes to the actual expectations, the military inspired aesthetics and overall modern geometry and architecture of the case make this piece better suited for a more relaxed outfit. In the area of case hardware, we have two crowns at the right side of the case, which is a change from the previous generation Nighthawk where the crowns were placed on the opposite sides of the case. One crown is aligned to the two o'clock hour and adjusts the rotating slide rule bezel bi-directionally from its first position. The second, the primary crown is located in the traditional three o'clock position and is flanked on both sides by low squared off crown guards. It's a standard push-pull style crown adorning the Citizen ProMaster logo that adjusts the date, time, and GMT functions. This is another change from the previous version of this model. Citizen now has opted for a slimmer push-pull variant rather than the longer screw-down style the Nighthawk used to come with. The benefit to this crown upgrade is really more with the aesthetic. I think it's more in line with the overall modernized design of the case than the old-school look of the previous version. And I think the great thing about this too is despite moving away from the screw-down crown, the Nighthawk still maintains 200 meters of water resistance, an impressive rating for any watch, let alone alone a watch more equipped for aviation purposes. To operate the crown, extend it out to the second position to adjust the date in one direction and then turn the crown in the opposite direction to advance that local time zone hand in one hour increments. Extend the crown completely out to the third position and then you can adjust the time. The finishing of the case is mostly brushed with the exception of a few top side surfaces along the faceted lugs and again along the tops of the crown guards, which are all polished. The lungs are fairly short, boxy, and are turned down, which aids in the compact case that we talked about a little bit earlier. Secured between those lugs, 22 millimeters at that, is a padded olive drab strap with a tan contrasting stitch. The strap tapers to a buckle, faceted 20 millimeter pin buckle. Citizen's logo is etched across the top surface here, and it's brushed to match most of the casework. Now, given that this watch is going to lean into the aviation style, 22 millimeters with that lug width distance, you're going to have a lot of different functionality and options at your disposal if you did want to swap it out for third-party options. Certainly a wide gamut of NATOs would absolutely look great on this watch. Transitioning back over to the front of the Nighthawk, we have a bezel with angled grooves that takes on a gear design and is coated in a glossy black PVD. 
These angle grooves are only decorative, but they do match the other elements of the case, like with the crown. Now the crystal here is a shatter resistant mineral crystal that provides a clear view of the sunburst gray dial within. Now this does not feature a sapphire crystal, so that's going to be a main point of criticism, but this has become a bit more of a standard for Citizen to use a mineral crystal. And it still does have its upsides when it comes to legibility, unless a sapphire is really treated with some nice anti-reflective treatment. The military inspired dial has quite a bit of information on display, which can be a little overwhelming at first glance. Now starting with the slide rule bezel along the outer perimeter, of the dial, chances are you will not be needing a slide rule that the Nighthawk comes equipped with. But even if you're not a pilot, it does allow you to do conversions between imperial and metric measurements. One small detail that almost goes unnoticed to the naked eye is the helical pattern that is applied to the slide rule's rotating disc, which matches the bezel and those crowns. Now, aesthetically, the design elements of the slide rule both tie elements of the case and the dial together and establish the color scheme, as well as how the remaining elements are expressed on the rest of the dial surface. The use of white and orange paint and print is used across the different levels of the dial surface from the slide rule down through the chapter ring and onto the main dial itself. There are significant updates to this dial and perhaps the most substantial dial change is the switch from applied markers to the use of painted indices here. There is a stronger emphasis on the aviator aesthetics as you might find with some Flieger inspired designs with a large 12 o'clock triangle and the rectangular quarter hour markers. Between those quarter hour indices are bold Arabic numerals and all of the indices contain a healthy amount of luminous white paint. To the inside of the numerals is a 24 hour register that uses a double sided hand to let the wearer know whether the watch is reading off the morning or afternoon set hours. This double sided hand also has two aircraft shaped planes at either end, one side being slightly shorter than the other, which moves across the register below. If the shorter hand is moving across the register, then the watch is recording the morning hours if the longer hands are going to be in play, the watch is indicating those evening hours. This function is not only helpful for general setting operations for the date, but it is also important and useful for the GMT function and acts as your home time hand while your centralized hour hand becomes your local time. Dial text is scaled back on this model, believe it or not, with just the Citizen logo and EcoDrive reference around the border date window at the three o'clock position. The previous generation Nighthawk references name here as well as the water resistance level at that three o'clock position with that date window, one thing that I did notice is how deeply set the date disc is underneath the dial surface. This could create some challenges with legibility, but otherwise I think for people that are going to be leaning into watches of this dial, it's better than not having a date at all. Now the final point of consideration when looking at the dial when it comes to legibility is going to be Loom. And Loom, just like many other Citizen watches from kind of that pro series of watches that they're developing is Fantastic. It's going to line up very similar to even dive watches in the category and should give you a lot of peace of mind in this area. Turning the Nighthawk over, we have a closed screw down case back with the recognizable Citizen Globe motif engraved in the back. Powering the watch from within is the EcoDrive B877 movement. Like all Citizen EcoDrive movements, this watch is going to utilize a solar cell to charge this watch. And really the upside of using a solar powered movement is it's going to bypass the use or need of a traditional battery or power source. And we'll use a rechargeable energy source to power that quartz oscillator. So you're getting kind of the longevity that comes with not needing a external battery with the continued upside of a quartz oscillator for that accuracy. I've heard great stories about these watches going for decades without any service needed. You are going to eventually need to replace the capacitor within this watch. So that's something to keep in mind, but longer service intervals and provides a ton of peace of mind. In regards to the accuracy itself, you're looking at plus or minus 15 seconds a day. Typically they're going to run well within those parameters. So incredible timing of these pieces compared to any mechanical counterpart. The watch can be charged with artificial light or natural light, natural light going to charge the watch quicker. And for the advancement of that second hand, it's going to advance in the typical manner of a quartz watch. One thing to keep in mind for those that are bothered by this is there are going to be variants that are not going to line up perfectly with those markers. One of the rubs that comes with quartz technology. All right, so now to unpack looking at the Citizen Nighthawk, this new variation. Now, I don't want to get into the idea of this one being better than the previous iteration. I think they just represent a, you know, welcome refresh from the collection. But really, what are you getting here and what's kind of changed? More of it is going to be from the aesthetic side, some functionality with the crown position. Uh, those are going to be probably the two most notable changes. But for the most part, uh, this is just more of getting a design refresh uh, from a watch that was 
kind of long standing in their catalog. Now, the Nighthawk has been long established, loved by many enthusiasts out there as kind of that nice entry level pilot oriented watch. They have the slide rule bezel, uh, kind of has some brightly Navitimer vibes, and is just kind of overly busy for kind of that pilot watch sake. Uh, but still, that is kind of part of its charm. Now, where this one is positioned and kind of how it's represented in the market, there are some things that make it a little bit difficult. I think opting for a mineral crystal rather than a sapphire was a miss by Citizen with a watch like this. It's kind of just leaning into more uh, pro specs and what this watch is representing. Legibility is actually good on this one considering how busy it is. Uh, the functionality of the crown is easy to engage and kind of figure out even though it is complex. Loom is absolutely fantastic on this piece and you get a nice peace of mind with the Eco Drive. I think the big question with this piece is when kind of comparing it to the previous version, is it better? Also considering that that one has been on the market for quite some time and you're seeing some markdown prices and seeing the price of this one, how does that really line up? I think you just kind of have to see what do you really prefer from a styling perspective. I think this is still a nice addition. There are some little drawbacks. You're getting that busy but recognizable dial design that this watch has really owned. And really what this watch is, is a very capable pilot oriented watch in this price range. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel. Also, if you're in the market for this watch and you like what you saw here today, definitely check it out. It's available on teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. We also offer price match. So if you see one of our products for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the form and we'll get in touch with you. Also, all of our products come with a full factory warranty. So you're completely covered if something goes wrong. Uh, you don't and have that cost on your head. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back in the content we're creating here, as well as on our main channel, helping to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.